Video number five of this series, we're gonna carry off where we left off, and if you haven't seen the previous videos, please go check those out. Uh, video number four, we kind of did a little bit of decaling on this um, this driveway. We turned it into a cobblestone. We put some of these cracks in the road, um, and you're gonna see right now, I'm, I've got a very disorganized scene graph, and as we uh, go through to the next video, I'm, I'm gonna organize that so you guys can take a look at just how important that is. But for this video, I wanna look into our lighting. And I'm not familiar with Twin Motion. I've said it before, I've only got about 10 hours into this software and I'm just figuring it out as I go. So I don't know certain classifications such as what we're even in right now to get to our location weather lighting camera. Um, I know that as you hit certain things, you see if you hit the F1 key, you'll get a YouTube video explaining this. I'm assuming is what that is, um, which I haven't done yet. So anyways, uh, we're in settings. That's what we're in. This is contact settings. So we're in the settings mode and under settings, we've got a couple different things. Location, weather, lighting. Now location means that you can actually set the location of this property true to our map here just by typing in your location. Now for the purpose of this video, and actually for the purpose of most of my renderings, I actually don't really care where this is located because I wanna make sure that this lighting looks the way I want it to look. So I can do a couple different things here. Um, let's just take a look at what the North Offset does. Now, North Offset is particularly useful because it coincides with the time of day and the month. So that if I want the sun in the background of this image, I'm really going to have to play with the north offset, there we go, and the time of day together to be able to place this where I want it to be placed. So that's part one of this. You see as we get direct light on this scene, we're immediately coming up with a lot of things that just don't look that realistic. So I'm gonna to try to avoid that at all costs, which means that I'm gonna play around with these settings until what I've established so far in this scene kind of hides some of the problems with the scene and then at the same time you know is, is complementary to the scene and not only that but ultimately my focus is this house this is my product I want to show this house the best I can but a part of showing this house the best I can means that the landscaping really needs to look good so we need to set this up you know, probably so that I set, cast a little bit of shadow, shadow on this side yard. I'm trying to get rid of, you know, this line right here, or I'm going to have to go fix it with geometry. I'm trying to get away from, you know, the fact that this is dirt, or I'm going to have to go fix it. And we've got some geometry problems here that we're going to have to re-import into the model. So a couple different things to consider there when I'm kind of messing around with this, this shot, right? And so I feel like about here is where I want to be to get rid of this, which is in the focal, excuse me, the foreground. And then I'm going to, that means I'm going to have to go in and detail this side yard to be just the way I want it to be. The next part is, I, I also feel like I want to, you know, get a little bit of sun on the front of this house. So we've got some conflicting things here to get this scene to be just the way we want it to be. So maybe we send it the other way. And we wanted to get just enough of that house. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We might have to play around with the daytime settings. And get a little bit of depth. So obviously you can play around with this for hours. It's actually quite fun. I encourage it. <laughs> I feel like it's it's a little bit of a, um, <laughs> meditation, if you will. And... You know, the more I cast hard shadows, we're seeing some other geometry issues in the way that uh, Chief Architect, which is where we built the model, cast shadows. So there we go. We'll just pick some some kind of random point to start from. And then the next thing is I'm going to go back into my settings menu and I'm going to start looking at the weather that's available to me. And the weather can do some really interesting things. Now, in the previous uh, video, we showed that we were applying some decals to our our roadway here and you can see immediately that some of those decals 
carry um, some calculations that that are impacted by weather. So there's that big stain that I put in the driveway and you can see that the weather immediately kind of gravitates towards that stain, creates some things that happen that coincide also with the terrain model as well. So um, some pretty cool things. I'm a big fan of the weather shots. I feel like the weather shots are what make twin motion worth it because otherwise I'm exporting to another rendering software. So there we go. I kind of like something split the middle. I, I I like that we've gotten maybe the morning dew out and we've got, or maybe these are oil stains. Got a little bit of pitting in this dirt right here. We're getting some a little bit of realism put into the scene. And then you can obviously play with the seasons as well. And here's that benefit from using those twin motion trees as you get some of that coloring that comes out in the fall, etc. If we want a big fall scene or a winter scene, there we go. Those those twin motion trees react beautifully to that. So um, I can kind of split the difference. Keep in mind that tree we imported in the previous, oh, what was it, video number three, we could change the color of those leaves to kind of match this overall scene. Maybe we'll make it, you know, a nice fall maple tree there. So that's us messing with the, the various tools in the settings section. Now that we figured out what the heck that name is. Um, the last part of this is we've got some additional parameters that we can adjust exposure. We can adjust our white balance. Um, which is a particularly useful tool for a scene with a lot of heavy blues in it or you've got a lot of blue light in there and you want to soften it up. And then we've got some you know, additional settings in here that have more to do with creating video content than it does to take still imagery. So um, the last part of this video is I want to discuss uh, the image exporter and also the video exporter. So. We're just going to touch on the image exporter and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an image and now this image is isolated from my model space. Even if I rotate around in this model and take a look at what I've got going on here, if I, and you can see I'm in media mode so long as I've selected an image and created it and not exited media mode by hitting the quit media mode button. I'm in media mode. The second I click on this image we just created, it's going to take me back to that viewpoint. And from here, I can select the more button that only um, shows itself as I hover over that image. So if I click more, it's going to give me these additional settings. Now, don't these look familiar? They're the same settings from this grayed out settings area right here. And this is where you can ultimately process your shot before you go to export it. Now, right off the bat, I know I want to export in 4K. I want this to look as good as it possibly can. So I'm going to increase the resolution uh, underneath my camera settings. This is where I might play with something like uh, the level of vignetting, which by default is 40%. Maybe I want to really focus on, in on an architectural element and really get that vignetting up really high. Parallelism, parallelism, boy, that's a tough word to say. Um, this is similar if you're familiar with Photoshop. Uh, you've got lens correction. Um, they also make lenses that are two-part lenses with a mirror where you can take a shot of, say, a huge monument. And with that tool or with the tool in Photoshop, you can basically um, square up your architecture to um, the bounds of your, your image. So parallelism is basically just making this building looks square so that if I came in here real tight and I kind of looked up at it and we're getting that you know that perspective view if we draw a zero point and perspective right here if we turn parallelism off it's going to make sure that my size of this building see how it's kind of off zero here it's off you know off of plane because of the perspective we here hit parallelism and it squares that up Next part of this, and let's just get back to that image. Get back to that view. There we go. We're going to hit that more again and back into the camera. Depth of field, you know, this is great where, let's see, and there's a more tab here. Same thing. Click on more, and this coincides with your aperture of a camera, whereas a one aperture is 
real fo like the focal point is that's really really low and it's also a very expensive lens common lens might be a 50 millimeter 1.8 and if you notice here it's still fuzzy whereas a 50 millimeter if i was taking a shot of this house would focus in with razor sharp clarity well that's because we haven't set our distance now you could set your distance manually by dragging this up or by selecting this and saying, oh, I don't know, maybe it's 20 meters away is where our distance is. And we're still getting a little bit of fuzziness on the house. Here's the tool I'm really looking for, which is a click and point set distance. And there we go. I want to set that distance. And you can see the distance right here changed from, uh, let's say, 17 meters down to 15 meters if I select right here. So now we're creating that that bokeh effect so that if we were to let's just quit media mode real quick and give an example we've got this just beautiful oh let's see how do i get off of this aperture hit escape a bunch of times until the program crashes speaking of which i'm gonna save sorry for that temporary <laughs> temporary save Let's switch our mode by hitting the number four key to move. And then I'm going to grab this guy, hold shift, drag him way over here. And he's gonna be, yeah, he's gonna be a copy. There we go. And I'm gonna bring him somewhere like that to kind of give an example of what that depth of field effect can do. So let's get back into our media mode let's hit more and in our camera we've got our depth of field we've got a 1.8 aperture and let's kind of get in real tight so that it really shows that depth of field and it also shows the just the quality of this particular tree there you go you'll see this, this is a really common practice in architectural visual visualization in exterior shots where we're kind of looking past a tree into the scene and it and it really shapes the whole scene by doing that and it also cuts out a bunch of area that we don't otherwise want to fill with something like an accessory house so that's a perfect example of that um, so let's get back into our camera settings, go over the last details here. Field of view, it's set by default to be 90. And I'll tell you, a standard in my practice for rendering is that I'm going to increase this quite a bit because I don't want that heavy perspective elongated house. I want my house to look um, very compact, very tight so that if you are in real life looking at a house and you're focused on just that house this is more closely related to your field of view whereas your peripherals will be a field of view like 90. so at this field of view we've got some really sharp effects going on with that bouquet and that tree right there and then you know this is frame this house beautifully now there's a couple of different approaches in twin motion that I see regularly. The, the more common of the two is to be really back far away from the scene and you can just see how good this looks the further back we get. If we get that depth of field and let's get this aperture and if I get this tree and move them way back over here somewhere now we're getting more of the common shot that we see in twin motion. But for the purpose of these this series of videos, I want to be able to get in as tight as possible and have everything look as good as possible. So um, let's just touch one more thing in this, and, and that's our lens flares. The lens flares correspond with where the sun is located so that if we crank this way up and we locate this scene so that the sun is behind this shot, we're going to get that lens flare flare effect that you see um, a lot of times in post-processing etc so that's going to be the tail end of this video the next thing we're going to get into is just doing more of those decals start detailing out the street the curb um, some of the lines in the street and some additional assets and then also i'm going to start fixing some of these materials some of the materials i brought in because bringing in them in in a 3ds format um, erased all of my bump maps so I don't have any depth in my material maps and that's going to really set this apart once we start applying those features.
Oh, and as always, please hit subscribe.